Welcome back everyone to part 2 of the Exploring the City series. In this chapter we'll go over the many wings we currently know about, their singularities, and some quirks we know about their districts. I'll also be discussing what we currently know about Limbus Company towards the end, so stay tuned or skip ahead to here for that. There are so many holes in our working knowledge base right now, but I'm going to categorize what we have anyway. There is a quick aside I'll start with before getting to the list. A Corp is directly operated by the head, however, they use products of B Corp and C Corp directly within their forces, making these three companies very tightly knit. The head was founded after Wings came to power, as far as we know. For the purposes of this video, the products of B and C Corp are considered to be their primary product, as it goes along with the naming convention we have thus far. However, there is no concrete info regarding which company they directly work for. A Corp, District 1, and Arbiters. Run directly by the head, they act primarily as a patent enforcement agency. The product of A Corp, Arbiters, show capabilities that are beyond anything we have seen among the vast majority of human limits at this point. It is unclear if they even are human by our own standards anymore. But the head allows them to exist, so they must be. Right? Not much is known of their wider capabilities or what makes an Arbiter an Arbiter. Shown to be singularity infused, we are not quite sure what that singularity or singularities entail. They have been shown to use expert handling of F and J Corp singularities, fairies, gravity manipulation, and locks as offensive tools as well, as telekinetically maneuvering massive pillars around with little to no effort. They are seen as the pinnacle of strength throughout the city. Even colored fixers feared their presence. Much of their deadliness comes from their cunning rather than their brute strength, but they are certainly no slouch when it comes to combat. Being able to decimate hundreds, if not thousands, without breaking a sweat. B Corp, District 2, Beholders. Directly run by the eye, Beholders are a piece of the trifecta we know least about when it comes to the head. Shown as a simmer of a human silhouette, we know that they can scry over vast distances. As the intelligence gathering branch, we have not seen much of their capabilities thus far. They potentially control the ability to teleport others where they need to go. One piece of concrete info we have is that they are known to pursue those that have failed to pay taxes and coordinate with Claws to eliminate them. C Corp. District 3. Claws. Directly run by THE Claw, the muscle of the head. The Claw is known as the name of the branch, as well as its members are known as Claws. Very confusing, I know. Imposing members that boast extreme strength and carry a massive claw on their hand to shred apart those the head has deemed as an enemy. They have several canisters attached to their bodies that contain serums which they can inject into their body to perform utterly superhuman feats. Serum K, R, and W denote based on their abilities that they have some connection to their respective wing. This, however, is unconfirmed. Claws are also known to frequently deal with those that break patents. D Corp, District 4. Currently, all we know is that some form of calamity has befallen this district. E Corp, District 5. Currently, do not possess any info on this wing and its district. F Corp, District 6. Fairies. A gold light that has the properties of unlocking anything that is considered locked. This can either be a physical lock or a conceptual lock, like a repressed memory. Apparently, F Corp tried to branch out their technology for other applications, but failed to pass any useful results because L Corp hamstrung their energy supply. G Corp, District 7, Gravity. G Corp singularities are used to control weight of an object. The most concrete example we have comes from Distortion Detective, where Ezra uses a weapon from Namir Workshop to change the weight of her weapon to deal a destructive blow just before impact. The object itself is a sphere that can be used to increase or decrease gravity. H Corp, District 8. All we know at the moment is that they like apples and Christmas, so Santa canonically exists as a concept in the city. I Corp, District 9. Currently unknown. A relatively safe backstreet until the pianist killed roughly 80% of the backstreet's residential area. More on them later. They had promised fixers who participated in the smoke war the ability to move into their nest afterwards, but fell back on the claim. Now the district ruled by I Corp has a reputation as an important place for musicians looking to replicate the pianist sound. J Corp, District 10, Locking. 
Their nest is known far and wide as a gambling den for those that can get in. Many J Corp employees spend their time at work looking at screens to try and catch people cheating. Hundreds of calls to looking at people cheating in the most pedantic way clog up their lines leading to those on the call lines to be extremely fatigued. According to a fixer within the nest, people rely on a special entity to predict major life events for them in the coming year and gain insight on more immediate matters. Their singularity can lock and seal anything that is open or exposed on a conceptual level. It can also be used to stop someone from speaking about specific information, marking them with a brand on the back of their neck. Other applications can be used to simply lock containers, but it is also known to seal a person's body preventing autopsy after they die. K Corp. District 11. Nano machinery. But they do own multiple singularities. Apparently one of the more decent nests also fell back on their promise to smoke war veterans. A location of Quercus Village, where they would siphon their distortions until Moses' office was sent to kill them. Their nano machinery is seen at work in HP N bullets, which repairs the body of anyone struck. R Corp's reindeer team is also known to use the singularity to protect their own sanity. L Corp, District 12, defunct as of now. The first of the L based wings that we know that claimed the title of L Corp was the catalyst for the smoke war, smoke being a byproduct of their energy gathering method. Following their demise, Lobotomy Corporation took their spot having been the masterminds behind the war with the intention of taking the previous predecessor's place as a wing. After the events of White Night and Dark Day, Lobotomy Corporation is no more as their nest has fallen into utter depravity with many factions vying for power. Everything we know about L Corp could be a video in and of itself, so for brevity's sake, know that the most recent L Corp, Lobotomy Corporation, had two singularities. One that allowed L Corp to extract encephalin, a substance with two varieties, and cogito. Encephalin can be used as a fuel across multiple devices, or it can be abused as a hallucinatory drug. It comes in both liquid or gas form. Cogito was formed in secret. It was the basis for the Seed of Light project, and is the reason Garion and a few claws went to dispatch Lobotomy Corporation using intel they had from a mole in the company. Lobotomy Corporation and their cast has been the primary focus of both the titular game of the same name and Library of Ruina. Much has changed in the city due to their actions. M Corp. District 13. Moonlight Stones. The most important thing you must know about District 13 is that it is the origin of Ham Ham Pang Pang, the most important sandwich shop in the city. M Corp. Singularity is Moonlight Stones, small stones that emit a golden shimmer and are used to mitigate or nullify psychological damage from mental attacks or from witnessing something traumatic. Apparently, they function by amplifying a single thought or process in the mind and fortifying a barrier around the mind. They can be applied to clothing as well, as shown by the Leo Association, but they are used by other fixers and syndicates too. N Corp. District 14. Unknown. Moses' office is located here, and we don't have much info. But, we do know that they have a taboo of absolutely no recording, video, or audio in their back streets. We are introduced to the concept of taboo hunters, which are fixers that are hired by the wing to retrieve those that have broken their rules and deliver them to the wing. Those that are captured are never heard from again, even by the hunters who send them to the wing. It is unknown how they tell if someone has broken a taboo. Side note, all of the buildings here are painted pure white. O Corp. District 15. Unknown. All we currently know is that there was an event that when the wings' feathers had suffered enough stress, they began to ballooning in size, causing their heads to explode. Call Center Clerk suffered the greatest from this phenomenon, later classified as the Balloon People Distortion. P Corp. District 16. Possibly food preservation. More on this later. Q Corp. District 17. Unknown. But it is where Roland is from, and apparently a pretty decent place. R Corp. District 18, Replication. A highly militaristic organization. The fourth pack, an unruly but extremely useful band of soldiers in the employ of R Corp work here. The fourth pack's teams are also known to be named after animals that start with R. Known to explore the outskirts and ruins in search of something, most likely old world relics that they can use or sell. Their soldiers are extremely skilled and easily replaceable through their means of a singularity. Soldiers that pass away can be recreated numerous times and are pitted in a battle to the death to produce the strongest survivor possible in the end. The whole process is made possible using T Corp Singularity to dilute several months into a fraction of that time. This process, through their hatcheries, allows them to bypass the head 7-day policy on clones, 
but it also takes an inordinate amount of energy. S Corp, District 19, unknown. All we have to go on at the moment is that they are connected to the Great Lake to the southeast and apparently does a lot of fishing. Yeehaw. T Corp, District 20, time track. A wing with the singularity that has the capability to preserve the present by binding time. TT2 protocol is their primary application of this as we have been shown so far. Allows time that passes within a confined space to move at a much faster speed compared to the outside world. The most extreme example of this were thousands upon thousands of years were condensed into roughly 10 years for the rest of the city. Working with W Corp's warp trains, they collect time for their impossibly long voyages across dimensions. Another example of more everyday uses are pot second stew meat that would usually take 3 days in 10 seconds, and an assassin device that can subject a target's brain to years of solitary confinement almost instantly, driving most individuals insane. U Corp, District 21, Stasis Preservation Boxes, primarily shown off in Distortion Detective where a severed arm was placed inside to halt it from decaying. It is known to be used for food or injured people as well. The boxes stop time from moving, acting as a perfect freezer and keeping the objects stored in them from decaying. V Corp, District 22, Unknown. The Thousand Needles phenomenon was investigated by Dawn Office here, before eventually being the site where crying children distortion killed 80,000 people. This led to their nest requiring an investigation by the Leo Association, hired by V Corp. W Corp, District 23, restoring to a previous state. While their outward product is the warp train, that is actually just the product of an old company singularity they bought the rights to. They utilize so many singularities to make their system go, but they're also extremely paranoid about their secret getting out. Their actual singularity is the ability to restore something to a safe state. When things inevitably go awry on their warp trains, they reset everyone on the train to the status they wore before the train took off. Employees are sent inside to scoop up everyone's bloody mess, separate them by genome, and reset them back into that person. Conversations will pick up where they left off with only a few known side effects. People feel a bit foggy after the process, and people can come out with negligible to barely noticeable differences in their height and weight. Their secret is so closely guarded, they prefer to kill employees who quit. X Corp, District 24, Unknown. Y Corp, District 25, Unknown. All we know is that they have high quality Pajan here, and the climate is quite cold, which makes sense for how far north it is. Z Corp, District 26, Unknown. We don't even know where it is. It is theorized to be out in a remote location, or under the city to some capacity. We do know that it exists through numerous mentions of 26 wings. There are a few more things that fall under this series that I should elaborate on before ending this video. Some of these are just footnotes that we have gathered so far, or are speculation off clues that we have come across the series. H Corp. Not known if it was a wing or not, but we do know that it was destroyed by the Arbiter Garion before the events of Lobotomy Corporation. P Company. Possibly the P Wing, but it is unsure. Shelter from the 27th of March references P Company. It is unknown if this is a translation error, but either way, we do not have enough info as of yet to confirm if they are a wing. There was also a wing known for making tattoos able to augment one's abilities. Confirmed to have fallen after the patent expired. Another fallen nest is one responsible for human silk, a material made from a person that can transfer the original person's abilities to the wearer of the garments made with human silk. Finally, we know that Yi Sang, a sinner in Limbus Company, was a researcher at an unknown wing. Speaking of Limbus Company, they are a company that deploys sinners to enter and retrieve valuable items from abandoned Lobotomy Corporation facilities within nests. Based on what we know so far, their primary goal is to retrieve items known as Golden Bows. These bows resonate with sinners and allow one to explore the depths of their ego. Virgil acts as a guide for the company, alongside Dante, to help sinners go about their missions. Project Moon is full of allusions and parallels to all kinds of stories in their media. The Olympus Company also shows the use of the ability to borrow an identity from someone else in an endless sea of alternate realities. They use a singularity from a redacted wing to use the ego equipment the company provides. The sinners use both of these tools to exponentially increase their strength. However, it is not permanent. Faust, one of the sinners, developed the engine for the company's bus, Mephistopheles. Last thing I should mention is the Smoke Wars, since I've alluded to them a few times so far. 
originally conceived as a plan from the heads of Lobotomy Corporation to pit several wings against the current L Corp, which was a very stingy energy company that produced loads of smoke as a byproduct. With the combined efforts of several wings, fixers, and such, the original L Corp was deposed and Lobotomy Corporation stepped in to fill the role as that district's wing. That should cover it for this video. Lots of holes to fill as time moves on, but it's good info to have regardless. Next video will be on the Fixers and their associations alongside the Syndicates and Five Fingers. See you all in part three. Ciao.